Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're going to make some flowers and I know I've done a couple of videos with the rosettes in them uh, and I had some viewers ask for different types of flowers. So that's what we're going to do today and we're going to start with this one and I've, I'm using um, a strip of warm and natural that's a fabric that's almost like a quilt batting but it's a lot thinner but you do get it by the bag in a uh, in the quilt batting section i buy mine at walmart uh, but you can't rip this so i've just cut a strip and you don't have to measure uh, you don't have to use a ruler or anything like that to make your line straight uh, you're just going to cut a semi straight tube just do the best that you can eyeballing it and then you're going to fold it lengthwise in half and glue it together right at the at the edge and then you're going to cut just little um little slits all the way down like i have here but don't cut through it if you do cut through it no big deal you can always glue them together but uh the idea is to to make it make petals and then you're going to kind of glue it in a circle leaving the center open and then uh, i've cut just enough to make two layers you could do three layers if you wanted uh, i don't recommend just doing one layer because it just doesn't i don't feel like it looks full enough but then you're just going to glue that top layer slightly inside the bottom layer and then you're going to be left with a small circle in the middle and and as you can see i'm just kind of attaching that with hot glue and because these are loops and you could leave them lo loops they look good as loops but i'm cutting those loops apart as you can see there i'm just kind of making a slit in the end and that'll just make more petals and the shape will be just slightly different but a lot of people like to leave those without cutting them and you could definitely do that but i'm just cutting mine because i kind of want this one to look um, a little bit like a daisy and most of these flowers i'm not really sure what kind of flower they are they're just we're just mimicking flowers and like i said this one probably is a little like a daisy but um my little rosettes that i do obviously i think of those as as roses but um a lot of these flowers i don't have a name for they're just flowers and here i'm just putting a button in the center of this one now if i really wanted it to be a daisy then obviously i would make this yellow but um, i'm just putting a little button that i feel like fits in the center and then that's the first one and that's a very quick easy one to do and you could keep adding these instead of putting a center in them you could keep adding them and it would be more like a zinnia so now on this flower i'm just cutting up bits of lace and this is where you can use old doilies that are in bad shape or that you've cut apart to make something else i'm just going to uh, use parts of uh, doilies and other laces to make this one and this one i'm just kind of building as i go and i do that a lot with flowers i don't really have anything particular in mind and i just kind of play with it and i have a lot of these and i think this is one that i'm doing that with but i'm just gathering the lace now you can obviously buy gathered lace uh, or gather, gathered lace ribbon that's already um, pleated or gathered like this. But it's not really necessary because you can just put a dot of glue and just kind of pinch that together and gather it yourself. And it works just as well. If you were try to, to try to lay that down without gathering it, it just, it wouldn't lay right at all. It wouldn't work right. But, um, but you do need to gather it and then it'll form a flower so it'll do two things it'll lift that up that petal up but it'll also um, help it form a circle better so now that is what i'm using for my first layer and then i'll clip that off and start to work on my next layer 
and now cut some lace off another piece and this is a little more narrow lace and so that's going to be my next layer of petals so i'll just do the same thing with this one as i did with the last one so on top of and slightly inside i, I glue this next layer and i'm puckering that or pleating that just like i did the last one so this will be my second layer and this type of flower is where you can get creative and just use whatever materials you have on hand you may have a doily that you can cut the trim off of or even a piece of clothing that you can cut a layer of lace off and i think this one i'm doing a couple of layers with like I said, it's just all up to what you want to do. We're just kind of creating as we go on this one. So I just keep gluing this little piece down until I run out of, um, of this little lace. And then, uh, then I'm going to cut that backing away. Because uh, as you've noticed, I, I built that on a little square piece of fabric and uh, that just makes it easier to build and then you can cut it away when you're done so now that the petals are done on my flower then uh, then i'm going to add a center and for this one because i had a wide area in the center that i could fill up then i'm just putting a little rosette in the center of that and i'm just kind of building it right onto this flower instead of making it and then gluing it on uh, i'm just building it right on so that i know exactly how large to build it and a lot of times i use these rosettes more than any other flower because um a lot of times i'll even use that as a center of another flower and so I guess this one is more like a rose because it does have that kind of rose center and then the other petals is kind of like an opened rose, I guess. So now that one is complete. And then the next one is uh, gonna be another one that I've made out of, or that I make out of some doily. So this is a doily that I've been cutting from, and I'm just cutting the trim only off this one. And it's great for when you get linens that, um, that are old and maybe have some stains on them, or maybe the moths have got a hold of, and uh, you can just use pieces. So this is going to be the petals. I, I like this doily because of the way the the uh, trim on the outside is is made and it's going to make a really cute flower so with this one i'm just gluing it all the way all the way around and i'm not doing a whole lot of puckering on this one just enough to get it to turn that circle and uh, and i do two layers of this and when i do my next layer I make sure to stagger the petals so that the next petal falls right in the center of the one underneath and that just kind of helps it look more full and makes it look more like a flower so I think when you can find doilies that are really unusual like this one it just adds a, it makes a more interesting flower because sometimes you can use the same technique on a flower and just use different material and make a totally different flower. And I decided here just to keep going with this one until I run out of that piece. And that almost fills this whole area in. Uh, and I could just keep adding this type of uh, lace until I got it filled completely in but I've decided with this one to add a center and I had a yellow doily lace doily that uh, then I decided I wanted to cut some off of and use as the center here so all I did was just cut this thin little piece of doily and just kind of roll it up 
and make it a center. So I'm just kind of rolling it almost like you would a little rose bud and I'm just kind of gluing that together and rolling it until it's the width that I need to fill that center in. And because I've cut this doily um, and it's almost unraveled at the end, it's going to resemble what the inside of a flower would look like. So I, I think that this is a good little piece to do. So if you think that all you have left is scraps from your uh, doily, uh, then just save them because you can use them for these flower centers. centers. And now this one is complete. And the next flower is also going to be made with uh, some parts of a doily. And so I'm just cutting the, the uh, lace off the very end or outside of this doily. And then that is going to, I'm going to form that into a circle like I did one of the other flowers. And that will be the base for my flower. So I just kind of decide what size I want this to be and I glue it together in a circle. And I guess in this case here, you could use just a little small doily. Uh, I find that those are very hard to find. I know that you can order them online. Uh, so if you do that, then just use a very small, small doily as your base. But I didn't have any, and like I said, I, you know, I've got a lot of old doilies that um, that can't be used to decorate with. So I just cut them apart and make things from them. So I've cut a circle from this cloth, and now I'm going to fold it in fourths. So I fold it in half, and then fold it again in half. And I know I'm out of frame here, that's why I'm trying to sh tell you what I did, since I can't really show you that much. And... Um, and then I, I make a wavy pattern with my scissors and then it opens up and when you open it up, the circle is wavy. So you just take a circle and fold it in half and fold it in half again and then, and then cut just kind of a wave pattern at the, pattern at the end and it'll make your, your circle wavy. And that just kind of helps it look more like flower petals. So I just glued that just in the center and then I took my fingers and kind of pinched it together so that it lifts the, uh, the petals up. And, and then this is the edge of another doily. Uh, and it kind of has odd petals. You don't see these very much. Uh, but I'm just kind of gluing those around as petals. So it really just depends on what your doily looks like. Uh, you'll just kind of see it and maybe you'll see petals on part of it and i did on this one so i just kind of cut these apart and then glue two of those together and then and then overlap those in the center if that makes sense that's really hard to explain but um but like i said just look at your doily and see what it looks like because you can layer whatever and just kind of create your own flowers and then here's another doily that i'm cutting that little thin uh, outside and don't worry that these will come unraveled because once you glue them down they'll stay together enough to still look like a flower so uh, with this one I'm just this is going to be another layer inside uh, but first I decided to use this other section from the doily and I go inside that because the one I cut first was just too small so I'm going to put a layer of this first. And like I said, just don't throw your doilies away when they're in bad shape. And if someone has some to give away, don't turn them down because maybe they have stains or tears on them. Okay, so now that this is glued down, now I can add that, that smaller piece that I cut first. And at this point right here, you could just put a center in it and be finished. Uh, but like I said, I, I decided to use that other piece because I still had room for it. If you've never tried to make flowers, um, 
you should really try because you can create one of a kind flowers just by cutting apart your various doilies uh, or just regular fabric because I'm going to be doing some flowers with just regular fabric also. And I'm not real sure what to call this one. I think if I had to say, it is probably more like a rose than anything else. Uh, but I do think it turned out good. And I think the main thing is just to make sure they look like flowers. Now for the next one, I just cut some circles. And this is that same warm and natural fabric. And I like using it because it's, it's kind of bulky, but it's soft enough. Um, and I've cut just a bunch of circles that are the same size. And what I do is, I hope I'm not going to be badly out of frame here, but so far I am. Uh, but I just take those circles and I put a dot of glue in the center of them. And then I just kind of squish them together. And I know that doesn't make any sense. Hopefully I'll get in frame so you'll see what I'm talking about on it. But I put a dot in the center, squish it together, and then a dot on the bottom, and then glue it just side by side. So the idea is just to, to glue these touching each other and just fit as many on this little circle as you can get. And the more you get on, the more it starts to look like a flower. So like I said, you take that circle. It doesn't look like I'm gonna get in frame here. So you just take that circle and you put a dot of glue in the center and you pinch it together. See the way I have it pinched together there and then you put a dot of glue on the bottom. So you're just, like I said, put a dot of glue in the center of that circle and then just squish it together. So, and then when you squish it together, then you put a dot of glue on the bottom of that and then like I'm doing here and then just glue it side by side and like I said you just fit all you can fit onto that circle. You can make these as small or as large as you want and yay it looks like I'm in frame here. So I put that dot of glue in the center, squish it together and then I'll put a dot of glue to glue that in place. Now I didn't put the glue on that directly on that petal this time because I'm trying to kind of fit them underneath. So a dot of glue in the center squish it together and then and then glue it to the underneath of your uh, rose once you get it to this point now like i said you're fitting all that you can fit here to uh to to make it look like a rose and then uh and then you could leave it like this and i think it still looks like a flower or you can add to this and the way you add to this is I just cut some little pieces of lace and I'm just going to tuck them back into little places that um, that I feel like could have room to be filled in and that's just going to add some extra texture and as you can t see here you're literally using scraps you just want it to have the effect of lace and so um, I'm just adding a dot of glue to these. And this is where I, I'm always saying use a low temp glue gun uh, because you're going to get this on your fingers here. So um, I don't have any problem getting burned doing this because I, I do use this low temp glue gun. So just tuck that in wherever you have room to tuck it in and wherever you feel like it needs that extra texture and uh, it really makes a big difference in this flower. Now you don't have to use the warm and natural fabric to do these. You could use any fabric that you want. Uh, even a more lightweight fabric will do. I just wanted this one to be a little bit bulkier so that's why I used the warm and natural. But if you haven't done it, and you try making flowers, um, I think you'll really find it enjoyable and even relaxing. I could do it for hours when I have time because I don't think you can ever run out of new designs for flowers. I've seen different designs done and I, I 
do a lot of those, but I just seems like I have even more luck just just creating, just taking my time and looking at the materials that I have and just creating my own flower because it's hard to go wrong with flowers. And as you can see, it turned out really cute and that lace made a really big difference in it. And then for the next one, these are, this actually is some sort of sheer fabric that my sofa came wrapped in and I thought, well, it, it's almost a nylon, but I could tell that it would melt and that's what I needed here. You can also do like I've done here and use curtain shears. So I'm going to mix that with this just for a little extra, uh, just to, to make it just look a little bit different and have some different textures in it. But curtain shears are great, even the ones without design. They're great for this, but they're great for lots of projects, I think. Now I'm using a candle here with a very low wick because I don't want a flame. And what I'm doing is I've cut circles from from these fabrics and I'm just taking, uh, I'm just using some little pliers here and holding it up next to that wick. There's not an actual flame there. And uh, what this is gonna do is kind of melt those edges and it will make them look more like a flower. And then not only that, but it's gonna kind of curl your petal up. And so what we're doing here is making petals. And don't worry if it melts through, it's just gonna add to the look. So, but I tell you, I've done, I'm doing a few here just for you to see. But the best way to do these is to use some tongs. And I just use my tongs that I use for the grill because they're longer and hold them over your cooktop. So um, that to me is the best way because you can turn your heat down or up as you need it. And uh, you don't have to hold it as close as I'm having to hold it here since I don't really have a, a flame. But uh, if you do these on the cooktop, uh, you'll find that they're very easy and it doesn't take the length of time that it's taking me to do it here. So I'm going to skip this part. You've got the idea and I'll show you the ones that I've done. So as you can see, they really look like petals and you can use different fabrics here and just try a lot of different ones and see what look you like best. But I do find that the shears work a lot better. It needs to be something that will melt. Now here, I'm just kind of layering these inside each other. So you have to kind of work to separate these petals and make this flower turn out the way you want it to. So this one probably isn't one of my favorites, uh, but it does work. You just kind of have to pucker it some and, and, and make these little petals separate. And what I do is just kind of stagger them a little. Like if I put one right in the center, I mean on one side rather, and I kind of stagger one to the other side. And that'll kind of give you some lift and, and create some more petals also. So I'll just do maybe um, seven or eight of these, I guess. And then I put a center in this. and. And like I said, this one this one looks cute, but it's really not one of my favorite flowers to do. It's very easy to do, but probably not one of my favorites. And it also helps to use smaller, uh, smaller petals as you get toward the center. And then I just finish off the inside of this one with a little button. And it's a cute flower. It just didn't, just not one of my favorites, like I said. And if you didn't have that lift from burning your uh, edges, then that one wouldn't work out. But with that lift, it does. Now this one, I'm going to add some paper in. I like to work with book pages. So I'm going to add some paper to this one. And you can, you can use just paper or you can uh, layer fabric with paper, which is what I'm going to be doing. But before I build this flower, I want to antique the edges of my flowers. Anytime that I'm working with book pages, I like to antique the edges. And I'm using just an antiquing um, ink. Uh, this is called Distress Ink. 
but you can use anything that you want. Uh, I've even used brown eyeshadow to antique the edges of these. And like I said, I'm going to be using these little cloth petals also. And so what I've done is I've, my first circle is a little, I've torn them because I didn't want them to be just cut exactly. And then, but I cut, I made a larger one and then a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller. And I did the same thing with my petals. So what I did actually is find four petals that were different sizes like this. And then I tore my, my um, paper to match. And then um, I want to antique the edges of the, these petals also since my paper is antiqued. And then after I get those antique, then it's ready to put together. So I put a dot of glue in my paper on my paper, and then I put my little petal on there. And I'm kind of pinching it slightly uh, when I when I glue it, and then I pinch my my next layer of paper so that it kind of cups up when I glue it on because I want to create some lift in this flower. So um, I glue that little piece of paper on there and I'm just using old book pages and then my layer of cloth. So you're just kind of building it as you go. You'll do your layer of paper crumpled and then your layer of fabric and just keep doing that until you get that smallest one on. And then you just kind of crumple one in the center for your center and that one's complete. And now for this one, uh, I'm going to use these petals as actual petals, if that makes sense. I'm going to glue them in a circle. So um, I just pinch them together like a petal and then just glue them side by side around this little piece of paper. So I do that with five petals here. And uh, this one, I don't really know what I would call this one either. It's not really a dogwood. Um, it's just a flower. Now as your base here, you could use cloth or fabric, I mean cloth or paper, uh, but I just had some of these circles already cut. It's why I'm using the paper here. So this one's very easy, uh, other than uh, other than melting the edges of these petals, there's not much at all to this one. I don't think you could do it very successfully uh, without the melted edges. But here I'm just kind of layering some on top. So this it had five petals and then in between those five petals, I'm uh, putting some more petals on top. And obviously this is going to make a larger flower. You could use smaller circles and do this in a smaller uh, version. But um, I like the look of this, these larger ones. I'm sorry this is a lengthier video, uh, but to get all these flowers explained well, uh, I kind of have to do that. And if you don't have time to watch it all, just watch some more later. But, um, but... I think this one turned out, I really like this flower. And then for the center of it, I just cut a little piece off some floral that I had and I put that in the center. I know it has a lot of petals. It still makes me think of a dogwood. And then I have one more flower that I'm gonna do and this one is gonna be strictly paper. So all I'm going to use on this one is book pages. So I've got those circles cut or torn for my book pages and I'm antiquing the edges like I did with the other flower. And after I get the, the outside of the petals antiqued, then I'm going to kind of antique the inside uh, somewhat. And you'll see as I do it, just think about the side of the petal that will be glued down and it's going to be kind of puckered. So I want some shading down in that puckered area. So as you can see, I'm kind of 
antiquing just a little bit there so that when I pucker that flower, it will have some shading. And now I'm gonna start putting it together. So I'm starting with the circle in the center. As you can see there, I pucker that. Um, I put a little dot of glue and then I pucker that bottom there so that it looks like an actual petal. And uh, like I said, I do that with each, each of them. I just pucker that center there, securing it with some glue. So once I've got all my petals done like that, then I can put them on my, on my circle. And that part is very simple. You're just gonna glue it to the outside of that circle. Like I said, this one is very simple, but turns out to be my favorite. So you're just gonna glue it all the way around that circle once you get the first layer on the outside done, then you're gonna glue another layer on the inside and just kind of uh, straddle the ones from the outside, if that makes sense. So then just adding that extra layer of petals is gonna help. This is another large one. And again, you could make it as small as you wanted uh, by just starting with uh, tearing smaller circles. And once we get this, these last petals glued on, then we just need a center. And for the center of this one, I'm also going to use a button, and uh, I'm using a wooden button here because I felt like it went with this book page, and especially with the antiquing, better. So now this one, I'm gonna put in a frame. Now I thrifted this beautiful wooden frame. I wasn't crazy about what was inside it, but I, I just love the frame. So uh, I'm using the cardboard here, which was already white. That, that was what was already behind the picture. So uh, that's gonna be my base here. And I decided I wanted, I didn't want just that white in the background. So I'm using my Kindest Regard stamp here. This is an IOD stamp. Uh, if you don't have one, I highly recommend this one. It makes a really good background. Um, so I use this one so much. It just takes that plain background and gives it some more visual interest. And I decided here that since my flower has the, um, the distressing on it, that I also wanted to do some on this board. So I'm antiquing quite a bit around the edges. And since that very edge won't show, I'm kind of bringing, bringing it in some too. But then I decided to just kind of very lightly antique all over this. And it won't be even. Uh, it's just gonna give it more of the look of aged paper. So if this were a love letter or something behind this, then it would have an aged look. So you just keep adding till you get the look you want there. And then I just put that board back in there, obviously without the glass, because I'm gonna be gluing this flower on the front. So because this flower is almost an oblong look, then I turned it to where it would be longer up and down. And I just glue that on, and then that makes a really pretty piece of art for your wall. And this one, again, is going home with me. I just love how that antiquing looks with this wood. And like I said, I love this wood frame. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and God bless you and your family.